Oh, go! Oh, what happened right there? Holy cow! That thing felt like a hey. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Woke up this morning. Holes are gone. They're all patched in. And I went to turn on my sprinklers. No worky. Just another day in, in home ownership. And I was gonna break out my shovel and, and start working. And I, I started looking at just the breeze and the beautiful conditions. I said, fuck, get that and let's go fishing. It's archery season right now. So you're, the amount of fishermen that are out there is like cut in half. And you have the ability to go out and have some amazing days in the fall without a lot of pressure. So today we're gonna to do something that I really like to do uh, in the fall, when the fall starts. It's dock fishing. It's dock fishing. It's just great in the fall. So I'm gonna to go to a lake that has some docks and we're gonna to try to catch a couple of pigs. While we're launching the boat, if you guys wanna check out any of the gear that I'm gonna be using today and get a discount, GuggenSquad.com has got you covered. Use my promo code LFG to save 10 at checkout. Get yourself some plastics, get yourself some fall gear. It's linked down below, so go check it out. Right, guys we are floating we're in our place of peace thank you lord starting from scratch here y'all so i haven't done a full dock fishing session in a while and i've been traveling around a lot i've been fishing around uh the country really so i've been just doing a lot of different things so i'm just kind of starting from scratch I, I literally have a reel out of the box here and i'm going to uh I'm going to put 20 pound line on it, on a go-to, a green series go-to. This is, this is like, pretty much you can fish everything except the outliers of like finesse and big swim baits, you know, heavy stuff like that. When you're dock fishing, you gotta have some heavier line. I'm gonna throw a Texas rig, probably go with the daggum bandito bug. Three eighths, I'm gonna say a quarter to three eighths. I've got one quarter in here, man. Definitely need to restock. Let me show you guys this little, this cool little dealio we got going on here. So I've got my plastics over in this side of the boat. This is normally where I put rods, there's tubes, but I like having the baits over here. I've got some leader line and I've got hooks attached to the bungee where you would uh, hook up your rod butts so they don't fly around. And then I've got my terminal and stuff up in here. So I've got different boxes, got my crappie stuff, it kind of hides up under here. You know, I didn't even notice that at first. I thought this was solid. I got up under there and I said, oh man, that's really cool. That's perfect for housing some boxes right there. Great weight distribution for terminal. And anyway, just like that, really like that setup. Suction cup back on here, there we go, ready to rock. Fall is an interesting time of year because a lot of fish will start to get on shad, but up shallow, man, they'll get on crawfish too. It's kind of, you get everything going on. You've got shallow dock eaters, and then you've got open water. You can chase fish in open water and schools with top waters and swim baits and all sorts of stuff. That's gonna do something right there. Here we go. I came to a windy side of the lake. It's actually like five to 10, just beautiful conditions. High pressure though. So I'm thinking the soft plastics are probably gonna be more prevalent, but, but if you get some wind going, this is where the square beaks this time of year start to come into play. So, you know, I've just got a little square bill tied on. I, I, I'm seeing a shad right here, guys. Look at this. This looks like one that got crushed and spit out. So look at my crankbait. Okay, look at the shad. Yeah, yeah. It's like fall feeding taking place. It's just a matter of finding one that isn't full of shad yet. 
All right, it's, this is gonna come together at some point today, but I'm feeling a moving. It's the bright sunny conditions are not calling for a moving bait bite, but the shad movement definitely is. Oh, it's a weed. All right, guys, no bites thus far. I've fished five docks, no bites. I've seen a lot of activity though. And I'm gonna make a run. I'm gonna go fish a different part of the lake, just see if that makes a difference. Then I'm gonna start switching up some baits and do some things, but I've seen a couple of blow ups. I've seen active fish moving around posts. That's that's one of the huge advantages of uh, having the forward. You know, I'm I'm probably gonna end up just turning it off once I feel comfortable because I don't need it after a certain point. Once I've seen everything I need to see, I'm not actually targeting individual fish on the docks. I'm just looking to see what they're doing. Are they suspended? Are they moving around a lot? Are they just sitting still? Do I need to go really slow? Can I get them with a reaction bait? That's the kind of things I'm looking for. And on the front graph, it's just, you get out past 10 foot and you're you're in shad land. You're in the land of shad. Let me just, crazy amounts of shad. So we got high pressure, we got a lot of bait, but at some point, things are gonna connect. I'm feeling it, baby. There we go, right on the corner. That's kind of to be expected. I just need to get one. What do we got here? Spotted bass. Largemouth, little guy on the square beak. On the square beak. Dock, rock, marina. Give me a little something better than that. I think we need to tie on a mid-depth crank just in case. And then we need to bust a move to start running around. A little more vibe. dingy on this one. I like it. It's different. There he is. Oh, golly, he was running with it. These babies running around hard, chasing. Where's my LMBs? Man, these suckers are feeding up. Oh, where's your cousins? There he is. There's a good one. 
Yeah. Right on top of that pile, baby. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, we done hooked up, folks. Finally. Finally. You are a good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have been waiting for this bite all day. All day. You're just hooked right in the schnozzy. Couldn't be hooked any better. Oh, there you go. There you go. There we go. Oh, recon to the rescue. Just took it out of the package. Oh, I just said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go to a point and I'm going to look for Something. I'm looking for white bass schooling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for crappie as soon as I change my mind on maybe catching a, a big bass off a dock. I come over to a brush pile and wah, bam, baby. Look at that. That is a stud. That's a solid four and a half pounder. Exactly the size fish I'm wanting to catch. And uh, boy, it's got a big old belly on it. That is awesome. Wah, bam, baby. Stud. Yes! It's not what I set out to do today. Sometimes you just gotta listen to the lake. And um, I had my crankbait rod in the box, and this morning I was like, I should probably get it rigged up. I had snapped off the other day on a crankbait. Had it sitting in there. I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna retie. And I grabbed this recon before I left the house, and I was like, this might come into play today, and it did. Uh, and I chose this color because there's so many shad running around. I just want to stand out. Plus, this is just one of the greatest cranking colors of all time. But got it down there on that brush and got bit. Let's see if we can get another one. Oh my gosh, I thought I was recording the whole time. I'm an idiot. Anyways, I just got thwapped. I thought I had a 10 pounder. You really missed the, the Iconelli dramatics, but um, when it hit it, it went the opposite way. Like, I thought I had a 10 pounder. Nice, nice three and a half. Wa bam, baby! Ooh. Oh, God, you gotta suck that one in really good because I have not had that many bites today. He's in like, he's in the base of it. I may have to worm him out. But the crank is calling him up. I love it. Yeah. That's her. That's her, baby. That is her. There it is. Oh my God, another big one. Another big one, exact same cast. The exact same thing happened, except I'm actually recording now. Oh my God, giant. No, it came off. Oh my god, oh my god, it felt humongous. Oh, go, oh, what happened right there? Holy cow, that thing felt like a tank. <sighs> wow, I haven't had a bite, I haven't had a bass bite in like six hours. I come to one spot and I hook up with three Mondos. That one was huge. Huge guys. Pull and drag as soon as I pulled into the fish. This, 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 this. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. Okay, I keep coming back here because my mic died. Apologize. The the way that I'm getting the bites is I'm I'm burning it until I am about to hit the brush or I just I feel the brush and I let go. I just let off and let it and then crush. I mean, they are running into it. That second one I caught, it it was hooked like kind of underneath. The first one was just dead nose. That last one, I don't I don't know, guys. I, when it hit, 
I, I've only had crankbait bites like that in Mexico. Normally, it's like you, you get them and you're like, oh, oh, okay, hold it now. That feels good. That's good. this was like boom right away, right away. Okay, I got to show you this. There's more coming. I see more. They're coming in. All right, here's the situation here. 70 foot out, perhaps 75. Here's the brush. We got one, one juicy there. Let's get on it a little better. There's, it's pretty big, and there's, there's a couple on the back side, and then the ones I've hit on the top. Wowie, wowie. They were just in position. I mean, I, I had the three. I had the three that you want to catch out of there. Lost one of them, the biggest one, unfortunately. But that's what we're going after. See this guy back here? He's ready. He's ready for recon. Back in the game with audio now. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna try to get one more. I think I can I can creep and maybe get a, oh my gosh, here's a suspendo buddy. Suspendo buddy, he's just like on top of a, I don't even know what that is. Oh my gosh, he's going, he's, he's on the move. He's excited. I think I just scared him off. I'm excited, holy cow. I'm excited, we got pigs out here. Pigs on a point. There's really good rock out here too to crank, but those fish just seem to be concentrated in and around that brush. Never fished this spot, by the way. This is just literally random. This could be it. That's her. That's it. If I run into the brush, it's getting whacked. Just got a little wind in my face now. It's uh, interrupting my cast, just a hair. Holy cow. I'm about to creep up there and get that crack and crawl in their face. Gosh, I see two balloons at the bottom. These are like five to eight pounders, man. Exciting stuff. Oh my gosh, look at this one. Look at this guy. I've disturbed the nest. There's been some movement. Kind of moving away a little bit. They see that bright chartreuse thing coming. They either get out of the way or they grab it. They either have to have it in their nose or they're getting out of the way. All right. I'm gonna, let's, 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 let's take a breather. I'm so excited, let's take a breather. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm game planning this out. I'm digging, um, digging for a couple things right now. Big boy, seven inch loaded dangerous and a pecan praline. Cause I just need a little, I haven't eaten. I need a little, uh, need a little something here. Need a, need a sugar bump. Trying to compose myself of all caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol as well. I'm trying to be a good boy. If you guys dip and do all that stuff, what is harder? Like when you're when you're not catching fish, or is it like when you when you get on them? When you get on them? Because for me, it's like when you get on them. It's that excitement, it's that, it's that rush. I'm battling it right now. I'm having a big sugar thing as a substitute and honestly, it's probably worse for me. This is not a toy, guys. End of the day, we're going all out. It's been a grueling grind of a day. And uh, I appreciate all of you that have stuck with me for it. Have you guys ever had those days where like I was literally about to just lift the trolling motor and go home. I was like, this, this isn't good for anybody. 
So this right here has been the excitement of my day, a nice little nugget. And I am going to milk it. We're gonna milk this spot for all it's got. Because from what I've seen, there's not, it's not a big pattern deal. Big main leg point though, like big obvious main leg point. Okay, that's a, wow. We have a little side piece. Oh God, big one, big, big, big one following it. Oh, it just turned away. Ooh, that's scary. I think another one has arrived in there. I think the hotel is starting to populate. Oh, that right there just spooked those fish at 40 foot. That trolling motor wash. Goodbye. It is just, when it's calm like this, man, they can really pick it up. I'm on the edge of some brush. I'm reading the braille right now. Reading the braille. It's saying possible crappie in the mix. Oh gosh. We've got, we've just got bags. This is the big fish hotel. Give me that kielbasa. Monster. Oh. He followed it all the way to the boat. That's how it goes. Oh my gosh, there's a big one in there that is chasing Shad right now. He's going back. The one that just followed me all the way in is going back to his home. Totally makes sense. The crankbait, you know, I, I, was, I was losing hope in crankbaits. I was like, what is going on? Since live scope has become super popular, like does, do crankbaits not work anymore? Um, and that is false. There may not be as many people doing it and you think, well, it doesn't even look like a fish. It doesn't look real, right? Like it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like one of these. Yet, a chartreuse in blue thing screaming through there, making noise. That is the only thing they have wanted. There's one right on top. He's in position to suck it. I see five helmets right now. I see a limit of helmets, like a 20 to 25 pound bag sitting in this brush. All right, I'm gonna get 50 feet away. I'm already 50 feet away from a good one. This, this thing is 20 feet long, just to give you an idea. It is a large, a large housing unit for bass and crappie. Oh, that's it right there. That's definitely gonna hit it. Oh, there's more stuff even farther I didn't see. There it is. Good one too, big and oh my God, same thing, same thing, same thing. Giant, 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 dude. I, oh, he's in the brush now. He's in the brush, come on. Keeping pressure, 10 pound line. Oh, I don't want to disturb the the nest, but I really would like to get this fish out. Oh my God, he broke me off. God, that was a big one. Holy. It was the cast. I had to nail the cast because I am not good and it took me a long time to get that perfect cast. And I got a little too close, probably disturbed the unit. There wasn't much I could do. I couldn't, I couldn't really pull up on him because he was gonna break me off. I, I just, I did the, I did what I needed to do. I don't feel bad about that. I needed to let him run a second. He was pulling back so hard, so hard. I'm telling you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go mark it, okay? And then we're gonna come back
Oh, there he is. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on, baby. We're on. Oh my God, he came off. Oh my God, another big one. Jeez. Went back to it, got bit again. I have just, I've, I've, I'm on the right spot, the right cast, the right lure. I just have not been able to freaking land them. This is crankbait fishing. They just pull off. I hate that. Probably overstayed our welcome on this brush pile, but it had to be done. God, I still, I still see them in there. They're just, they don't want to play ball now. Understandably. Well guys, I guess I'm gonna take it back home now and dig up that hole I was gonna dig this morning. Work on those sprinklers. But this was a nice getaway. Sure was nice, thanks for joining me here. Uh, video totally did not go the way I expected it to. Uh, I was really wanting to just put on that, that heavy line, get up under those docks, doink a couple of nice ones. The ones I was catching out here However, I did grind my buns off and found a juice a juice hole. I mean, if I was gonna fish a tournament tomorrow, I'd be coming right here and um, put on a little bit bigger line and hopefully bring in every single fish out of there. Probably a 22 pound sack, if I had to guess. Everything that I had on, lost, uh, it felt very big. There was, there was one in there I, I felt for sure it was uh, Ocho, north of an Ocho. We got, we got some home vlogs coming because uh, we're moving in. We're moving in. Next couple videos, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to see the new Casa. Uh, I'm excited to show you guys. New home for the Silver Bullet. Great spot for me as an outdoorsman, great spot to raise the fan. So hit the sub button if you wanna stick around for more videos in the Silver Bullet, out in the woods, at the Casa, and beyond. I'll see you guys on the next one. Time to get out of here. I'm gonna leave you guys alone now. Bye. Thank you for your lips. We broke out some rods today, didn't we?